This is Jeff and Tony Brabeck, uh, the founders of Our Little Sparrows. If you guys want to find out more about us, there's a link down in the description below. Feel free to check us out. Are you unsure of what to tell your family and friends about your unborn baby that has a life-limiting diagnosis? Maybe you are receiving phone calls, texts, and emails from those that are unaware and wanting an update on your pregnancy. Today, we are going to discuss deciding who to tell and how much to share. We are also going to talk about three of the best ways to communicate what's happening with your pregnancy post-diagnosis. All right, welcome to episode number five, you guys, of our grief series, The Pregnancy Journey, Grieving from Diagnosis to the Loss of Your Baby and Beyond. If you can, please subscribe to this channel, ring that bell so you get alerts when we post new content to our YouTube channel every week. In just a moment, we are going to give you three of the best ways to communicate what's happening with your pregnancy uh, post-diagnosis. But first, you guys, we're going to talk about who to tell and how much do you share with them. Uh, both Tony and I think that's a good place to start. I think it's important to know that if you choose to share or maybe you choose not to share, that either way is okay. This is your journey and you can set the tone for how you want people to be involved. Generally, people will take the lead from you. If you choose not to say anything and keep it private, it's totally okay. It's your business, it's your body, and it's your pregnancy. There can be a caveat, though. It can be a bigger burden to bear on your own than you might realize. The good news is, is that you can change your mind at any time to share the news, if you choose, with whomever you like. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's going to be different um, for everyone. I think you know, um, the phrase that like, there is no wrong way. There's, there's just your way. I think that totally applies here. Uh, who can really tell us what's right and what's wrong about how to, um, approach or deal with our own, uh, you know, personal things. So the other option would be to share. For some, this would lighten the burden you would carry. This gives people the opportunity to support you, love you, and it's okay to ask for help, and it's okay to receive help. The caveat for this one is that you will see some people just don't know how to respond appropriately. The topic of the death of a baby makes people really uncomfortable. People don't know how to respond. Some might even just expect you to get over it and move on. You will quickly see who are your supportive network and who is not. I think, um, you know, the whole statement about it, it may lighten the load, obviously that depends on you, right? It depends on um, your personality, your character, you know, what you, what you desire, um, you know, just in basic communication. And that's before being diagnosed during your pregnancy, or even finding out you're pregnant, that's just who you are, right? So I think, um, yeah, it can lighten the load um, for those that maybe aren't used to sharing, right? Aren't used to sharing as much. And that, I mean, that might be where you came from. Yeah. I can imagine because uh, I married to you and I know you. <laughs> 12 years is July. Mm -hmm. I think it's based on your personality. Um, mm -hmm. so, for, so for some, it may be natural to share and it doesn't necessarily lighten the load. They may not recognize it in that way, but they may just recognize it as this is just who I am. This is how I communicate. Um, the other thing that you said, which I thought was really good, um, was about other people's responses. Uh, and it may, they may be inappropriate. As much as you can, I think it goes to that. I, I've said it in previous episodes, grin and bear it. Unless it's out of malice, right? Then you got to deal with it. But grin and bear it. Most people are just, they're stepping in it and they don't. They don't know that they're doing it. I think just to, I mean, just to kind of reinforce what you're saying is that um, just to give yourself grace and them Others grace. Others grace, yes. Because they you have, have to. A lot. Majority. Well, not have to. I shouldn't say it that way. But it goes a lot better if you give. If you, if you extend that grace yes. to those that just don't know. Because exactly. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like to be in your shoes. And oftentimes we don't know in general as a society how to deal with the loss of a baby. Which I, what I, that's what I was going to say. I love that you said it. it can, this can make other people uncomfortable. Even though you're choosing to share it with that person because you have a relationship, you have a, a love for them. Say it's a mom or a dad. Like, why wouldn't you want, I mean, there's different situations, of course, but the the average uh, relationship with a parent, even if it's a rocky one, you would want to have them in on what's happening. 
um, most of us for that's that's the case. But even that can be difficult, right? right? And they can they can be insensitive. They can say inappropriate things. They just don't know, and it can be really uncomfortable for them. Which is kind of you know awkwardness breeds um, weird responses yeah. or rude, insensitive responses yeah. because it's really a uncomfortable conversation for them. We could dive into this so much more and we are planning on having another mm-hmm. episode on this. So yeah. please on check awkward, back with us awkward on conversations. awkward conversations. Yes. And so they're um, going to happen. They're going to happen. So please check back for that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We'll make sure to put a link in the cards above. For sure. If you are getting value out of this episode, please give us a thumbs up and share with others that might find value in it. All right, you guys, now we're going to get into what you've been waiting for, the three best ways to communicate what's happening with your pregnancy. If you're someone like me, communicating can be overwhelming. It's exhausting to have to repeat everything over and over again. So here are some helpful tips. Tip number one, use social media to provide updates. You can set up a specific page or account to post information and updates privately. Social media is a great tool to get the word out and fast, and it's fairly easy to use. On the downside, you can be overwhelmed with a lot of other things coming in your feed. This will most likely bring up a lot of emotions. For example, a friend's pregnancy announcement, pictures of families, or advertisements of baby or infant products. We recommend that you take a look at your settings on whatever social media you're using and make sure they are set where you want them. We didn't use social media. No. no. Well, we didn't initially, but after Olivia had already passed, then, then we, we did. We said them. Obviously, there's, you know, everywhere in between, not using it and using it, right? There's everything mm-hmm. in between that. For us, we didn't use it right. initially, but we did use it after. Yeah, we were very private about it and didn't say anything on the internet, I mean, in terms of social media. And after Olivia passed away, um, I think it was probably a day or two later, we did make an announcement um, saying that our baby was born and that she had passed away. And that was for a lot of our friends that were not local. That was the first time of them hearing um, of anything. Even happening. Any hap- yeah. Even, I mean, yeah. people knew we were pregnant. pregnant. We did announce that on the internet you know, when we got pregnant, right. and, but we didn't say anything. We um, went pretty silent after that, we which I think silent. is actually more, more common. Yeah. I think it's more and common think, than not from what I've seen. It's just your comfortability as to who you want to know or who you want to know and how you want to share it. Right. And for us, we wanted, we are fairly private about it, and we, at least I was not comfortable saying anything on a social media platform. And so we really kept it just to our immediate family right. and close friends. And we had, which we'll talk about shortly, about how we communicated with them. But other than mm-hmm. that, we didn't make anything really public and until after right. our daughter died. Yeah. If we knew more about pages and having private groups, um, knowing, knowing what I know now, right? This is right. a common thing to say. Knowing what I know now, I probably would have yeah. done things different. I know um, I understand Facebook more um, as like private pages, private groups uh, within those pages. And that probably would have been something that we would have done or at least talked about doing. A lot has evolved in the last few years in terms of social media. So I think even those options that we have now to have private Facebook groups um, may not have, or at least we weren't aware, but um, may not have been back then, six years ago. Years ago. Yeah. All right. So, tip number two uh, would be to start a blog. Karenbridge.org is very commonly used. Um, it offers a space to share updates for families experiencing health uh, journeys and it's for free. Yes. What's nice about it is it's in one place. Everyone that you want can check or subscribe for updates, and mm-hmm. you won't have other people's news or news feed crowding your own blog. Yeah. Um, and like we said, this one, um, Bridge, is free and it's free of advertising. 
There are other platforms, however, some require a subscription and a fee. We did ours through blogspot.com, which I think is called Blogger. Um, it's still there. And if you want to check out our story, it's at ouroliviahope.blogspot.com. We'll put that link in our show notes or description below. Mm-hmm. So when you have a chance, you, can, you are welcome to check that out. It's so interesting. I actually read a couple of our entries, and it's definitely raw, um, what we were writing about. And some actually details of, I kind of have either forgotten or I remember differently, differently now. For sure. And so documenting your journey will actually help you remember years down the road. I actually found it difficult. To, like, I wanted to document, um, but I, for some reason I couldn't find the words at the time which might end up being the case for, for anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Writing for me was an outlet and it was a way to communicate to our family and our close friends, what was going on. At times it was really overwhelming for me to, to write what I was feeling. I was feeling a lot. I felt very heavy with emotion and just thoughts that he needed to, to come out, but to actually write or type out something, um, actually had, some difficulty sometimes. The few times that I wrote um, a blog entry, it was like a large chunk of what I had been feeling. Or yeah, I, I found it hard to put my thoughts, my daily thoughts, into words. But I could put like days, weeks, and even months previous. I could put those into words at time. All right. So tip number three: um, we're going to talk about a point person. Um, sometimes it's best to designate one or maybe even two. Uh, people that you feel that are you know, safe for you and that you trust them um, to be your voice, to be your communicator. You can have them say as much as or as little as you want people to know. You can have people reach out to them and they can respond according to how you want them to. They can also direct people to your blog for updates or your care site, which we will cover in a future episode. And a care site, just so you know, is a website that you can schedule or list what your needs are, such as childcare, meals, lawn service, pet care. Um, and there's more to it than that. So we will cover that in another episode. Yeah. Cool. Also, your point person can update your blog or your social media accounts with your permission. That, that would take a huge burden off. I know that would if I was going through that again. Yes, that would... That's something we did not have in place. And looking back, that would have been very helpful. So we have actually created a worksheet to help you identify how your best mode of communication. Um, It helps you identify maybe who your trusted people are that you can consider as a point of contact, um, what ways you want to best communicate to your family and friends. And how much you want to say. And how much you want to say. How far do you want to go. And also... Who do you want to communicate to? Is it everyone that you know that you're okay with? Or do you just want a select group of people? And it just helps you kind of identify what you prefer. And you can use that as a point of reference. You can give that to your point of contact and they can use that as a reference as they are communicating with your family and friends. So it's just a helpful tool. Again, it's, these are just suggestions. These are not you know, things right. that you have to use or you have to use feel obligated to use but it can be overwhelming to try and come up with what do i ask you know what do mm-hmm. i use as a guideline or whatever or even so to even figure out what to ask or what to say yeah so so hopefully this this will help you kind helps. of get you started but we'll put the link in the description below mm-hmm. and um you can download it or print it off and and use it however much you want all right so to wrap this all up um really what we're trying to hit home is that communicating with everyone can easily seem overwhelming uh, and tiring, no matter your personality, really, at the end of the day, um, we're all human. So, and we're all going through a very stressful situation. So we hope these suggestions, um, that we gave you in this episode today on how to communicate with friends and family, um, helped you, right? This is all about how am I going to navigate, uh, my own way, uh, of communicating with others. Really, again, it's the, it's up to you to tell others, um, you know, to lead by example, and I know that you're in a tough position, but that's really what's going to make it this road a lot easier to travel with others if you want that support system around you. So it's all about um, feeling supported and respected, um, and it's going to happen uh, 
if you put that out there. Most of all, we want you to know that you are not alone. You are loved. Our Little Sparrows is here for you because your baby will always be cherished. We're here to support you in any way that we can. So if you liked what you saw in this video, click on the next video in the grief series up above. And if you're interested in our weekly podcast, you can click on the video below.